obviously this is a tremendous growth area and let me tell you a little bit about the background uh, you know people hear a lot of buzzwords and some of these bu buzzwords actually mean real things that are actually driving this business you know climate change energy security carbon footprint etc all of these are very very relevant concepts that get thrown around uh, but are extremely relevant to this business and why why it's growing uh, there's there's clearly a much greater degree of social acceptability uh, and willingness if you will to assume responsibility and uh, actually do something about it about the environment than there has been you know any time in the past if there's one thing that is a driver for this business it is policy and regulation because because it's new tech technology for the moment the economics are not quite to the point where they are hundred percent competitive with the existing if you will offerings and so regulation and policies are extremely important be they in the form of grants loan guarantees feed and tariffs all of these are words and phrases and concepts which uh, as a factual matter means that the end user is paying slightly more for power or energy that is being produced by alternative sources and the reason is n these things have not been scaled up to the point that they're economically if you will competitive with the alternative but the price of power is actually set by the price of natural gas and what's happened in the natural gas environment is because of new fines and new ways of actually drilling there is more gas that is now available from the shale plays and horizontal drilling and there is a lesser demand because as we talked about we're coming off a recession so high supply lower demand has resulted in low gas prices which results in low power prices which means there is a bigger gap between what is achievable if you will from traditional sources versus new sources and what that means is that there's a higher degree of reliance on policy and regulation we see tremendous growth in the energy efficiency and storage basically things that are not necessarily generation related because with low commodity prices those investments are not quite as uh, you know attractive as they otherwise would be so where you know how can you get to if you will the standards that have been set which is you know twenty percent by twenty twenty must come from sources other than the traditional uh... well if it's not going to come from wind solar etc because power prices are low it's going to come from other means i.e. people doing more with what they have conservation energy efficiency storage uh... and so these are th this is the business that i think uh, is described if you will as clean tech and we see that on a tremendous upward trajectory. M&A and IPOs or capital raising are all, if you will, in many ways, uh, driven by market conditions. Uh, it's an incredibly capital intensive space, so capital raising is unavoidable. We're obviously an institution that is well placed to help the companies that actually need to raise that capital over time we expect the market to normalize and once it does I think the capital raising that needs to be undertaken in this country and, and globally to just get deploy what is the target in terms of uh, in terms of renewables and, and alternative energy uh, technologies is is staggering it's it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars and you know I think that there is capital available and willing to get invested in the space. Uh, again, going back to what I said earlier, policy and regulation needs to be such that it attracts that capital. And M&A, in my mind, is really a, a, a function of markets as well, much like capital raising. And it, it tends to be that when uh, markets are up, M&A sort of follows when markets are down, M&A is also down. 
The only thing I would say is uh, there are companies and, and organizations that pursue m and in lieu of a capital raise. In other words, if you were going to take your company public and the public market were not available, uh, there is another way to raise that capital by selling part of your company potentially in a private M&A transaction, for lack of a better phrase. So uh, we're pretty bullish in terms of the activity levels. I think what's going to frustrate, uh, if you will, results or closing of transactions is potentially a difference in uh, valuation expectations of the seller versus the buyer. Uh, and in the case of the IPO market, receptivity or willingness of the investor to pay what the company thinks it's worth. And, you know, I think the market is pretty efficient, and, and I think over time, once it's normal, once it normalizes, we, we should we expect volumes to, to go up. I mean, we're doing our part in that we are a full-service organization that has identified alternative energy as a key business, core business that we're going to pursue. We're going to help our clients that have elected this as a business strategy. And what we do is help them raise capital, be that in the form of debt or equity. We help them identify projects and companies that they want to either pursue in the form of greenfield development or acquisitions. We make our own capital available in the form of tax equity, equity, uh, preferred equity, any, we, we play across the capital structure to help companies that have identified this business as core to them and we've identified as core to us and we help them execute on their strategy. The derivative benefit of that is job creation, uh, decreased reliance, if you will, on foreign oil, uh, all the bigger themes that you read about and hear about. I think the ability or the opportunity to create jobs and keep jobs in this sector is very high. And the reason is it's a new industry, and there'll be lots of new deployment of technology and, and new power plants, if, if you will. And so we, we, we expect this, the opportunity for job creation is very high.